Hey guys, let's talk the cruiserweight division. Um, perhaps a division that doesn't garner as much attention and as, a, as much limelight as you would perhaps expect. Seeming that you've got guys that are verging on heavyweight size and also often have the speed of a couple of divisions below. Um, therefore bringing power and explosiveness to a fight. And we have a, a great fight that's happening this weekend. A really intriguing fight which I wanted to bring your attention to. And that is of course... Juan Pablo Hernandez going up against Troy Ross for the IBF World Cruiserweight title. Just a bit of a background as to how this fight has unfolded. Troy Ross fought Steve Cunningham for his IBF for this IBF World title um, a way back, and Troy Ross was way up on the scorecards clearly before there was a cut and the fight was stopped, and Steve Cunningham kept his belt. Uh, rather than giving Troy Ross a rematch, which many people felt should happen, and they felt it was a big injustice, Steve Cunningham got an, uh, an excuse uh, was excused out of that mandatory of Ross, and he went and actually defended against Juan Pablo Hernandez. Now, in the first fight, Hernandez was up on the scorecards when there was a cut, lo and behold, and Hernandez actually won the title from Steve Cunningham. So essentially, the thing that worked for Steve Cunningham against Troy Ross, worked against him against Hernandez in that first fight. However, uh, Steve Cunningham got his rematch where Hernandez defeated him by unanimous decision. So Hernandez now has the title. And therefore, Troy Ross comes into the picture, back into the frame now, and he gets his opportunity, which many feel he deserves, to fight for that title again, this time against Hernandez. So... For me, this is a real 50-50 fight. This is a, a difficult fight to call. It's one I've been uh, mulling over for a, for a few days now, and it's really difficult. Of all the fights that are happening this weekend, I'd say this is probably the most difficult. Um, because I can see all methods happening. For example, I can see Troy Ross staying on the outside and using his superior speed to outbox Hernandez to a points decision. I can also see Hernandez using his subtle, subtle basic boxing skills <clears throat> and his height and reach advantage to actually keep Ross on the outside and I'll box him from there. I can see Troy Ross jumping in, hurting Hernandez and then put, then just jumping on him and getting TKO up, TKO up against the ropes and I can also see Troy Ross jumping in and getting caught with a counter shot from Hernandez and getting KO'd. So all these things are possible in this fight in my opinion. Because we've got two top class fighters here in the division going up against each other. And this is what we really like to see. The, what I've already mentioned is, is that Johan Pablo Hernandez has the height advantage in this one. He's around 6 foot 4. Troy Ross is around 5 foot 11 and a half. There's essentially around a 5 inch height advantage here for Hernandez. He's going to have to try and use that. I think he wants this fight on the outside. I think he wants to keep distance. Um, and I think he should look to counter Troy Ross as Troy Ross jumps in. Because on the other hand, Troy Ross is a better mover, he has speed on his side, and he's quite explosive when he, t he can jump in and give explosive uh, sh um, attack in the same way like an Amir Khan or a Roy Jones Jr. does. Um, so, with Hernandez, I, I rate both of these guys, and I think Hernandez you know, is a good boxer. He, does, he works off a good basic plan of having a good jab, and he also counters well. He's got a very good left hand. Um, and he throws good combinations when he wants to attack himself and be on the front foot himself. He throws some good combinations. He's pretty accurate. Um, he's not the quickest guy, and he will be slower than Troy Ross. But he has good boxing skills, and he's accurate. He's got a good eye. He's quite sharp when he needs to be. And he also can, can we dodge, bob and weave punches with his upper body. So don't be... Um, I, I wouldn't be... Um, uh, tricked into thinking that he's this slow plodding guy because he's not. He does look quite slow but he's got some subtle good movements. He's got basically good boxing skills and a good boxing foundation to back it up. Troy Ross, um, very quick on his feet, looking to move around but he can also fight inside. That's the thing here. If you look a couple of fights ago when he fought Carl Handy, Troy Ross for me showed that he can fight inside. He can smother a guy and he can smother your work and if he, if he wants to he could come forward and I wouldn't be surprised if he wanted to smother Hernandez here and work this on the inside. Push him back to the ropes and get up on him, particularly going later into the fight as Hernandez tires. Then I, I wouldn't be surprised if Troy Ross wanted to mix this up inside because he throws good uppercuts inside and he works very well. He, he holds his opponent, he does very well. Then again, he's a smaller guy. okay. So 
I wouldn't expect it as such because I'd expect him to use his movement, his speed to get in with explosive uh, shots and get back out. That's what I'm expecting because he's a smaller guy here, yeah? Um, if you're going to go up inside with a, with a bigger guy, um, then it's not going to work. Um, he, most of the time, the, 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 the bigger, stronger Hernandez is going to outmuscle him and you get the, you play the risk of getting hurt. And also, when you come in inside on Hernandez, you're always going to risk getting hit with that left hand. Okay, so... Both of these guys, another big point here, both of these guys are southpaws. Now both guys, particularly Hernandez, has the power in the left hand, but more predominantly over the right. Both guys have got power in both hands, but I'd say the left hand is particularly dangerous. But being southpaw, this, this, this is going to have to come over, um, this left hand is going to have to come over the top. Okay, it's going to, the, the left hand of the opponent is going to come over the top of the, uh, rather than down the pipe. That's just going to make it a bit more difficult to try and See, see a stoppage coming in this fight. Not impossible, obviously, but I'm just saying that Southpaw against Southpaw with, with left hand domination is um, that being a power hand is a, is a bit more difficult to actually catch um, these guys. Um, both guys have a decent defense as well, um, they both keep a decent guard, um, which again makes me think that this may go the distance. Um, final point this is in. Germany in this fight. Hernandez is Cuban but he actually lives in Germany and fights out of Germany. And Troy Ross is Canadian. So this leads me to believe, you know, we can't ignore the fact that if this goes 12 rounds then it may be sided with Hernandez. But I'm going to go for Troy Ross to win a majority decision in this fight because I just think he'll, he'll be able to use that outside game. I think he'll be quick enough coming inside to get in, get in and get out. And when he's in there, I think he'll have enough um, enough experience and enough, um, what's the word I'm looking for? He, he'll have enough skills, basically, inside to do a bit of damage while he's in there and then get back out. I don't think he'll be um, overly um, dominated inside by Hernandez. And I just have a feeling that Ross will take, will, will take the title. I have a feeling that Ross ha he has the ability to stay outside, employ that jab, use the speed, and... You know, jump in, get a few shots off. I know he's a smaller guy. It's a bit of a bank here, but I think you know, being the quicker guy, I think he can over overwhelm uh, Hernandez a little bit with his speed and really surprise Hernandez with that. A bit uh, tentative given this prediction because Hernandez, like I said, is a good boxer, and I'm concerned with the jab. I'm concerned that Troy Ross gets hit with a jab too easily, and I I know Hernandez has a good jab. So I'm be looking out for that. If early in the fight you see Hernandez landing his jab consistently and with good effect, then I'm afraid that uh, he may take the fight over. He may be even looking for a stoppage. And he may possibly be dictating this fight and go on to win this fight comfortably. But I'm going to bank with Troy Ross. I think that his speed will, will, will prevail. And I think he'll actually be able to win a close fight, but I think it'll be a majority decision. So, thanks for watching guys, please let me know what you guys think, this is a really good pick and fight for me, and it's really one I've, I've you know, struggled to really come to a decision, but um, let me know what you think and, and how you see the fight. Thanks for watching.